We're going to be looking at 22 players that you can catch off the waiver wire for week 13 and beyond. Some of these guys you can throw in your lineup right now. Some of these guys are stashes for the rest of the season. Handcuffed for running backs, wide receivers who are getting more targets, quarterbacks who are getting a good schedule later in the season. Also some tight ends as well. A little bit of everything. But what you need to do right now, click that subscribe button. Tap it with the finger on your phone. Click it with the mouse on your computer. Whatever you need to do to get the job done because we're covering the waiver wire every single day. We're also helping you set those lineups. And when the draft comes around next year, by hitting that button, I'll be around for you to help you with your research because we're covering players every single day in the offseason, helping you during training camp and helping you build your fantasy teams. Click that subscribe button, stop missing out, and let's start things off with Zach Moss. We did a video on him today, but we caught news on Jonathan Taylor. He's dealing with a thumb injury. We do not know how extensive that's going to be, whether or not he's going to be out or not. But we're going to have to read the tea leaves here. Zach Moss is going to see a value boost right now. And it does not hurt picking him up just to see what happens. And he's more than likely on a team because he's rostered on about 60% of ESPN leagues. And it's probably about similar in other formats. But if he's on waivers, he's a pickup. He's a guy to know about. This is fresh news. We covered this a few hours ago. But still, Zach Moss, a huge pickup right now. Pat Fryermuth, one of the top tight ends to pick up off the waiver wire right now because he came back in a big way. He's coming back from that injury, and now he's starting to produce fantasy points here in Week 12. 21 PPR fantasy points. That's off 11 targets at 34.4% target share. Saw 105 air yards in this game. Ran a fair amount of routes. Sure, he's a tight end. He's going to be up and down. But now we got another tight end to look at who's getting targets, who's getting workload. Going to Jaden Reed again, and he's getting volume in the passing game. Five and a half targets a game, 17% target share, and he's been pretty consistent over the last three games. Week 10, 19.4 fantasy points. Week 11 against the Chargers, 19.2. And then last week, week 12 against the Lions on Thanksgiving Day, 15 fantasy points. He's consistent. He's running a lot of routes. The Packers offense likes to use all these wide receivers. One will hit. One will be mid, and one will be okay to bust levels. But still, Romeo Dubs, throw him in this conversation too. Both these guys should be rostered because they have been consistent. He's averaging 15.2 fantasy points per game over the last four weeks. Keaton Mitchell still on waivers in a lot of leagues. Don't be scared, homie. Don't be scared. He's a home run hitter at the running back position. This is something we don't normally see at running back. We see this a lot at wide receiver with the deep ball wide receivers who get a lot of air yards. But Keaton Mitchell, every time he touches the ball, is a threat to score that touchdown anywhere on the field because of that elite burst and that elite speed. And you need a player like this on the back end of your roster. Championship week, it's against the Dolphins. You do not want him on another team. Just pick him up, see what happens. You don't even have to start him. He's going to be volatile. He's going to be up and down. But still, you want him on your team. Isaiah Likely is the other tight end we're looking at this week. Week 12, he saw a 73.2% snap share and six targets. Caught four balls for 40 yards. Didn't hit on fantasy points, but he's getting a lot of work. He's getting a lot of targets. That's something to note going forward, especially if you're hurting at tight end. You can play the matchup with him. And if he's going to continue to get this much workload in the passing game, he's going to eventually hit. He's a tight end that you can play with in your lineups going forward, especially if you don't have a top 10, top 5 tight end on your roster. Demario Douglas, last three games, 8.3 targets per game and a 24% target share. Any wide receiver who's seen a 20% target share or higher needs to be picked up off waivers and needs to be on a team. Your team, somebody's team, he needs to be rostered. And he has been fairly consistent. Week 7, 11 fantasy points. Week 8, 7. Week 9, 10 and a half. Week 10, 14.4, and then week 12 last week, 10.9. So he's scoring enough to get you by, but he's not hitting upside. And the reason why is his ADOT is very low, averaging just 47.3 air yards per game, but still getting enough volume to help you out week in and week out. 
So you can use him to play the matchups with, mess with him in your lineups from week to week, see what happens, but he's getting a lot of targets and that's something you need to put on notice. Rashawn Johnson seeing a boost in touches and snaps. We saw it yesterday, 12 and a half fantasy points. He's going to be a hot get off the waiver wire, a guy to look into. Look at Deontay Foreman, check in on his health a little bit, see when he's coming back. But Rashawn Johnson is on the upswing right now. And these rookies, they hit on different times of the year. He could be hitting on the last few games of the season. You never know. These rookies have a lot of upside. He's got good size adjust athleticism. He's on a Bears offense that's very up and down and wonky. But still, the touches and snaps look like they could be increasing going forward. Matthew Stafford, and he's back from an injury. He's got his weapons back, Puka, Cup, Kyron, and in weeks 15 through 17, look at the schedule here. We got the Commanders, Saints, and Giants. So if you make it that far, you're going to want him. Prior to that, schedule's a little rough, but he's on waivers in a lot of leagues. He's got his weapons back. He's operating out of a clean pocket. 83.9% of his balls are catchable. And it looks like he's on the upswing if you need a quarterback. Curtis Samuel is a guy that we've been picking up off waivers and throwing him back all season long. But the volatility king hit last week with 19 fantasy points. But over the last three games, he's been averaging 6.7 targets per game and a 15.6% target share. He's going to be off and on. He's going to be volatile. But Sam Howe spreads the ball around that's just what he does and there's a lot of volume in this passing game he can hit for you any given Sunday and a guy you want to play the matchups with AJ Dillon might be back and he tends to hit on the back end of every season that's how he likes to play he just likes to save things for December he's a December player and Aaron Jones we got to pay attention to the knee if he's out again the touches are just going to increase for A.J. Dillon, he's going to see a good opportunity share, and that's going to be good enough to get you by. Not good enough to win your week, but good enough to get you by. Because week 11, when Jones went out, he scored 10. Week 12, he scored 11. Good enough to get you by. That's all I'm going to say about A.J. Dillon until he starts showing more. Noah Brown, watch his injury status, but we want Texans wide receivers. We want them. C.J. Stroud is good. They push the ball downfield. He hit two weeks in a row, week 9 and week 10. We want to see what he's going to be doing with Nico and Tank healthy on the field. But the fact that if he's healthy and running routes, you're going to want him on your fantasy team, at least as a back-end wide receiver to play in matchups with. Kenneth Gainwell, one of the top handcuffs in all of football right now because DeAndre Swift's injury history is very extensive. That was the huge knock on him, if you've forgotten. If he gets hurt again, Kenneth Gainwell is going to be a guy everyone's rushing to off the waiver wire. If you're interested in this offense, if you're interested in Gainwell, maybe you want to pick him up now. If not, Khalil Shakur is an upside wide receiver who sees a lot of air yards. He's getting more snaps. He's getting more opportunities, and he's very up and down. He's a wide receiver that you just swing for the home run, and you're more likely going to strike out, but if you connect, you're going to connect big, and this is what I mean. Week 9, 9 fantasy points. Week 10, 3. Week 11, 20. Week 12, back to 7. So about 1 out of 5 games, he's going to hit in a big way. That being said, with the scoring margins here, if he gives you about 6 to 7 fantasy points, maybe even nine on the bust week. That means he's not too far off from the other waiver wire wide receivers who did well. That being said, if you strike out a miss, it's not going to kill you that much. But if you need to swing for upside, he's one of those wide receivers to look at. Tajay Spear, handcuff for Derrick Henry. And we've been saying this all season long. He's been seeing a lot of snaps all season long. He's getting a 31.7% opportunity share. He's using the passing game. If Henry goes out, everybody's going to be wanting Tajay Spears. He's going to be a hot name on the waiver wire. Maybe you want him now. Maybe you don't. We got other players like Jamison Williams. And just like Khalil Shakur, upside wide receiver who can hit in a big way, but it's going to bust on a lot of weeks. But if you need to swing for the fence, here's your guy. You can look at him. Close your eyes and maybe you hit. More than likely, you're going to strike out. But still, if you need to score points in a big way, these are the type of wide receivers you need to look at. Rico Dowdle, another handcuff running back because at this stage in the game, you're looking at handcuff running backs because everybody's rostered the running backs are getting touches. Tony Pollard gets a lot of touches. If he goes down, 
Rico Daddles, next guy up. You want a piece of the Cowboys offense. Jalen Hyatt. He's an upside play, rookie wide receiver. At this point last year, everybody was talking him up as a first-round pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. Fell to the third round, but over his last four games, he's seen a 90.8 air yards per game. Deep ball city with this guy. So like Khalil Shakur, this guy could hit for you in a big way. Week 12, he hit for 15.9 PPR fantasy points. Got a ton of upside. Maybe more for 2024 and beyond. But right now, you got to watch him and see what he's going to do. Ty Chandler, another handcuffed wide receiver who's got some upside. He can house it on any given play. Something happens to Alexander Madison. He's going to be a home run hitter that you're going to want on your roster. We've seen him hit a little bit off and on. And then when he was starting, when he was getting opportunity, there was a run where he had a, a long touchdown run called back, which would have amounted to way more fantasy points to his total, which would be having more people screaming his name. So if he's sitting on waivers, you may want to take a look at him. Odell Beckham in his last four games is seeing 5.3 targets per game. 19.4% target share. So he's pushing about a 20% target share right now. Any wide receiver out there seeing around a 20% target share, you need to look at as a get off the waiver wire. He has a bye week in week 13, so you can wait a week and get him, but you may want to get him now just in case he is seeing an 8 out of 13.2. Mark Andrews is out. The ball's got to spread around in some of these matchups, so he might be an option you may want to look at here. Ezekiel Elliott. A handcuff for Ramondre Stevenson. If Stevenson goes out, Ezekiel Elliott goes on the up, but he's still seen a 31.3% snap share over his last four weeks. That being said, he's getting opportunity. He's getting workload just enough, especially around the goal line, that you might be able to use him, and you may need to this week, considering we've got a lot of teams on by. But Ezekiel Elliott, another handcuff we're looking at. Greg Dortch. He's a sneaky wide receiver last two weeks. He's been balling with 17 targets and a 23% target share. You may want to look at him as a sneaky play off the waiver wire. Small sample, but you got to react fast this late in the season. Jeff Wilson, the meat shield running back on the Dolphins. If Raheem Mostert goes down, Jeff Wilson up. If Devin A. Chain stays hurts, Jeff Wilson up. Scored 10.3 PPR fantasy points last week. They may start using him on the back end of the season to lighten up the load on these running backs so they can get through the playoffs. But another guy looking at as a handcuff on a top-tier offense that you may want to look at, Samaj P. Ryan. He's been scoring these last few weeks. Over 26 fantasy points in his last two games, a 22.9% opportunity share, a 26.9% snap share, and RB17 on week 12. He's been productive. Maybe a guy you don't want to roster, but maybe a guy you want to think about if he continues at this rate. Those are 22 players that we're looking to grab off the waiver wire this week for week 13. And this week's very important because we're going to start rolling into the playoffs. We want to get our bench, our rosters together, so we're good for the future. But the waiver wire isn't super strong, so you have to be very strategic. Let me know who you're picking up off waivers in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.